So thanks everyone for joining us today at the online live event to learn. I'm Mika, the host from AI Camp. So before we get started, just want to do a quick introduction on AI Camp. So we are a global online platform for developers, engineers, and data scientists to learn and practice AI technology with the mission of making AI available to all developers. AI Camp have grown to over 70,000 tech engineers in the group, have hosted over 300 local tech meetups, workshops, boot camps, large tech conferences, and live stream most of tech talks globally. We have local study groups in the major cities in the US, a few cities in Europe, India, China, Australia. You can take a look at the website to see our upcoming tech talks, workshops, and crash courses that we offer. And starting next week, on Tuesday, April 23rd, we have open source data processing engine for TensorFlow at LinkedIn. On Thursday, May 2nd, we will have open source end-to-end -end auto ML by Salesforce. On Wednesday, May 8th, we will have deep learning on mobile device at, at NVIDIA. And on Wednesday, May 15th, we will have grow compiler at runtime by Facebook. And most importantly, starting on May 14th, every Tuesday and Thursday from 10 to 12 p.m. Pacific time, we will have our online workshop on deep learning for developers. So in this course, you will learn the fundamental of deep learning primarily through a series of hands-on exercises guided by the instructor. The course will balance learning theory, working on projects, and hearing from guest speakers in the field. So students who take this course will be able to embed and frame pro pro problems that can be solved by deep learning, choose the right techniques to the problem, understand key deep learning concepts and how deep learning model works, build deep neural works for classification on images, as well as structural data using Keras framework. Describe reinforcement learning and implement reinforced learning to play games. So I know that's lots of information to take away, but if you are interested in the course, so please uh, go check out our website and we have limit, limited time discount at $9. And going back to our main topic today, so today we're excited to have Ke Chiu Hu from LinkedIn. Ke Chiu is a staff engineer a staff software engineer at LinkedIn in data analytic pro, uh, pro, uh, platform group. He is currently leading effort in cluster resource management system and deep learning tra training infrastructure. So today, Coach will talk about Tony, which make it easy and effective to run distributed deep learning jobs with GPUs on Hadoop cluster. So without further ado, let's welcome Kachu to talk about distributed deep learning jobs on Hadoop. Okay, I, uh, I, can, I can share my screen now, right? Yes, I can, uh, I can share my, and then you can start to share your screen. Okay. Um, so Can you see my screen? Yes. Okay. Yeah, uh, thanks everyone for coming to the session and uh, thanks to Bill and Miku, Mikael for inviting me for, to give this talk. Uh, I think uh, uh, Mikael has already introduced me. My name is Kachu. I'm an engineer at LinkedIn, primarily leading the effort for the resource management systems and also the deep learning uh, training infrastructure. So today's topic is about uh, how to run distributed deep learning on Hadoop with Tony. Uh, in this talk, we have a couple uh, topics. The first one, I'm gonna give you a brief introduction on how we run deep learning at LinkedIn, and also what's the current status of like uh, deep learning training at LinkedIn. Then we're gonna talk about uh, how do we run distributed deep learning on Hadoop with Tony and LinkedIn. In the end, I will give you a quick demo. So uh, machine learning is actually everywhere at LinkedIn. So it basically like includes all the major like, aspects. For example, in the people you may know, Right, so we use machine learning to give you recommendations who you should connect with. We also have uh, machine learning for job recommendations to match you with the right jobs. We also have very good uh, machine learning models for newsfeed to give you the most relevant and useful information, and also some other stuff like, for example, LinkedIn learning and recommendations. Uh, but machine learning is actually pretty hard. So when people talk about machine learning, people think about like uh, the machine learning code, the model code. But uh, to make a machine learning model work in production environment at a big companies is actually pretty hard. So if you take a look at this uh, this diagram from this uh, paper, 
uh, machine learning code is actually only a small, very small portion of the whole machine learning or deep learning ecosystems. So here's uh, like some processes, how we do deep machine learning at LinkedIn. So firstly, you need some data, right? So this will come from some data ingestion systems. For example, at LinkedIn, we use Kafka to produce the messages and use something called Goblin to ingest messages to our like uh, HDFS to store the data. Then after data is ingested, it's time to do some preparation, right? You need to clean up the data, label the data, and get it in a right format to be consumed. And after data is ready, you have to do some feature engineering to extract out the feature to be consumed for, machine, for model development. After all these are done, then you can start working on the actual model development. And then after you explore the model, you have to do some model trainings, different iterations, and after the model is ready, you need to do model deployment, like version control for the models, and in the end, you can finally serve the model. So you have, you have to keep this uh, iteration multiple times to, in order to have a very good model. So at LinkedIn, we have uh, an initiative called Productive, Productive ML to accelerate, accelerate this loop, and then we have teams working on every part of this ML pipeline. And for my team, we are primarily responsible for the model development and also model training infrastructure. And that's, that is also Tony's focus. So what are the challenges when people are developing model and also doing training? So the first thing is to uh, people want to interactively explore data and quickly experiment with different models. It's almost not possible for someone to just pick up a model, right, and make it right at the first trial. So for machine learning and deep learning, it's more about like trial and error to find the best model that fits into your like, product scenario. So we want to have more like, interactive explorations. And we also want to take code developed in one single machine and scale it up to run on a cluster of machines because we have so much data. We have terabytes or even terabytes of data to train the model. So talking about the first item is the, the challenge is the interactive model development. And this, and this right now is very popular to use notebooks. And at LinkedIn, we use Jupyter notebooks. And there are a couple of challenges for this one as well. The first thing is like you cannot access, we cannot directly access HDFS data from dev boxes due to some security restrictions. So our solution was to, you can install the Jupyter notebook inside your own machine, and then you run a technical job inside a Spark job and then launch the Spark job via the Libby service. But this is like pretty error prone and it has tons of like timing out issues. Uh, but if, what we really want is just to run some technical program, not, uh, not a Spark job. So we use this one, we, uh, with Tony, we launched notebooks on demand inside the cluster. So we, uh, we bundle the, path, the Python PEX file with no libraries and also the notebook binaries into a, a, a PEX file. Then we use Tony to launch the notebook inside the cluster, inside the container, inside the cluster. So there's no like data restriction issues because all of them happens inside the cluster. And you can also request GPU. So that's for the, note, for the model exploration. After you uh, get a pretty good model, like via the uh, exploration phase, you need to scale up the, the training. You want to run the model, so you want to scale a model from like training inside of one gigabyte of like sample to like scale up to use like maybe one terabyte of data. So if you want to train a complex model on, uh, on large amounts of data, you definitely need some like uh, to parallel, parallelize the training. And the common strategy is of course the data parallelism, right? Because you don't want to run them like just inside one or two boxes, that's gonna take forever. And also you want to run in multiple machines. And of course you also want to use GPU for deep learning. And you can, that, that can help us accelerate the computation like significantly. So uh, the good news about uh, running uh, machine learning on, on, on Hadoop is uh, there are quite some new features in Hadoop, Hadoop uh, infrastructure to support uh, better and more effective machine learning. So the GPU resource uh, support was added in Hadoop 2.10. Uh, 2 this is gonna be released maybe uh, in a couple months. And also it's also available in all the GPU-X versions. And it also, it, also has some, it also has some production level support for Docker since Hadoop 2.9 and also available in GPU-X as well. It also has something new, a new uh, initiative to do some deep learning inside Hadoop 3.2. So uh, how can we, wrong distributed training on Hadoop Young, right? Because the previous one is more about the infrastructure inside Hadoop. So how can we leverage all the features inside Young? 
And we actually did a lot of research before we started Tony Project because you don't want to reinvent the wheel if you can just take advantage of all the existing open source projects. So we actually did a quite a lot of research and also experiments with, with different frameworks. So here are a couple of like pretty popular and common open source frameworks or solutions from the industry. We have uh, Kubeflow, Kubeflow from Google. We have uh, TensorFlow for, on Spark from Yahoo and also Spark Deep Learning from Databricks. And so Toy is from Intel and also X Learning from Chihu and Horovod from Uber. So, uh, so here's a quick table comparing different solutions, what are the pros, what are the cons. For Kubeflow, it's actually a pretty active uh, project. It, uh, uh, it has a very large marketplace as of like libraries, plugins, and also the community is actually pretty active because it depends, because it uh, uh, sits on top of Kubernetes and Kubernetes is pretty active. But there are a couple of issues. The first issue is like LinkedIn is a, a heavy Hadoop shop. So we have uh, clusters of like tens of thousands of machines. So it's not that easy to like just swap out Hadoop for like another uh, system, which is not scalable any, at, uh, yet. And also Kubeflow is also pretty new. Uh, and so that's the first, for the first one. That's why we cannot use Kubeflow for, at LinkedIn, at least for the next one, two, for the next couple of years. The second thing is the TensorFlow on Spark. So TensorFlow on Spark, uh, so this is actually runs on Hadoop and it's actually very easy to integrate with our ecosystems. But there, there are two issues. The first one, in the current version of Spark, there's no GPU isolation support. So it's not possible to like uh, acquire GPU reliably with uh, Spark 2.x. And also the second issue is there's no heterogeneous resource support. So this means if you ask for like two GPUs for your worker, you also have to ask for two GPUs for your primary servers, you know, like typical asynchronous primary server worker topology. So that's a big risk of, of resources because if you have a, a job with like two primary servers, but with like, for example, three workers, right? You are wasting 40% of the GPU resources and the GPU are really expensive. The other one is uh, Deep Spark Deep Learning. Uh, it's basically, it, it is similar to the TensorFlow Spark. And the next one is Toys from yeah, Intel. It's, this is also uh, TensorFlow on, on Yarn, but uh, and also it's pretty lightweighted and it's pretty loosely coupled, but there has been no activity since for the past one year and a half. Uh, so that's why we also could not choose this one. And the other one is X Learning from Xihu. Uh, so this one, is also similar to the previous one, but it has no GPU isolation support. The next one is Horovod. So Horovod has very, uh, it has some advantages. It supports the fast MPI communication, but there are some, there are some issues for Horovod as well. So first thing is uh, it does not work on Hadoop either um, because it requires to run MPI and uh, to an open MPI requires API run to SSH to other machines. And that's not easy to support in Hadoop. Second thing is like it requires some code, modif code modification inside your code to make it work. It also there's no like GPU station support. So after uh, uh, visiting, revisiting all the existing solutions, we ultimately decided to build our own solution, which is uh, Tony. So we started with just TensorFlow support. That's why we call it TensorFlow Yarn. It's like Tony. Tony. Uh, it's a shortcut for like T on TensorFlow O N in on and why on Yarn. But now we also support PyTorch and we are also working on our support. Uh, so now it's more like uh, things on Yarn to be more appropriate. And uh, uh, it can be used to easily launch a job with only a few requirement arguments. Like you just need, you can specify how many workers you want, how many premises you want, how many GPUs per task, and also specify some source file Python environment, Python version environment to launch the job. And also to make it easier to use, we also build something called, we, we also build a, a job type for Azkaban. Because internally, Azkaban is our workflow manager. So we build a customer Azkaban job type plugin. So you can run job, you cannot, you can run 20 jobs in the same workflow just as another Spark and Replicator jobs. You can also chain them together. So after talking about uh, how, like why Tony the solution, so what is Tony in the end? Like what's the, how Tony, and how, how Tony works? So if you have ever used a Spark, if, or if you uh, have a, uh, some understanding of Spark, so you can compare TensorFlow plus Tony with a Spark. So TensorFlow is similar to the Spark core, so it's more like the computing engines, they're more about like how do you like, uh, create the graph, run some like forward and backward propagation, calculate the gradients. And 
And there's another layer that is uh, below TensorFlow and Spark Core as something to coordinate with the corresponding resource management system to get all the machines out. So in, for Spark, it's component called Spark on Yarn, and that is used to grab a machine from the cluster and support the corresponding Spark work, workloads. So Tony is in the same layer or like doing the same in the work for TensorFlow. So Tony is responsible for orchestrating uh, distributed TensorFlow scripts on Hadoop. So it will talk to the Hadoop Yarn to acquire the computer resources inside some containers, for example, memory, CPU, or GPU. And also, it's also responsible for setting up the uh, environment and launch the actual TensorFlow jobs in the Hadoop cluster. And besides this, it's also responsible for like for tolerance and also for some job monitoring. Uh, I'll talk about what is Tony. Let's move on to have a quick introduction to Tony's architecture. So Tony has a couple of components. It, uh, the first one is the Tony client. So Tony client is the thing that uh, the user in interacts with. So it is the entry point for Tony jobs. It's responsible for packaging the user's configuration, the user's model code, and submit as a young application. So once the Tony client submit the job to Hadoop. Hadoop is going to create a, like one container to launch something called Tony Application Master. So Tony AM is the brain of the whole application. It's like the driver. So this is responsible for setting up all the environment and manage the life cycles. It will talk to Hadoop Beyond again to negotiate the resources for the other executor, executors or like the jobs. It will also responsible for setting up all the container, container environment and launch and monitor the containers. And the, the, at the bottom layer is like the is the Tony task executor. So the Tony task executor is responsible for launch the, act, the actual TensorFlow Python script, and also do some hard beating with application master for liveness checks. So uh, what are the features of Tony? The first thing, if, of course, it is uh, in the scales. Uh, it's supposed to run the TensorFlow jobs in like a lot of machines. And it and it scales basically almost linearly. So here's some uh, experiments we did with the inception V3 model, and for the time to like 10, 100,000 steps. So for example, with one GPU, it takes it took it takes around like 55 minutes, and with two GPU, it took around like 28 minutes, and with four and eight, it also cut by half and half. So it basically scales pretty much linearly. The more GPU, the more resources you is slow at is slow at the uh, the training, the less time it takes to uh, reach more steps. And second feature is uh, GPU awareness. As I mentioned before, with the newer version of Hadoop, uh, the infra layer already supports GPU. So Tony takes uh, the advantage of this uh, GPU awareness feature in the young, and and it itself is also like GPU awareness. So that will make sure uh, we will have isolation for GPUs. So for example, uh, we have two nodes. The first one, each node has like four GPUs. And uh, there are two container, container requests. And uh, the first one uh, took like two GPU away from the first node. And the second request took like one GPU from the first node. And the third request asked for two GPUs. And because, the, because Tony and Hadoop are GPU aware, so the, the third request will not be routed to the first node, but routed to the second node, and isolate the two GPUs for the container, container for the third container. So they will, so they won't interfere with, with each other. And the, the second feature is uh, test, easy, much easier tensor board support. And uh, so because right now, uh, if user wants to uh, access the tensor board when they are when I, when, I, when I train a job, they would have to copy the log files to local machine and then run and then launch the TensorFlow instance pointing to the local log files. So this is because we cannot, for as I mentioned before, we cannot uh, access our HDFS with local box because there are some like firewall restrictions. So this is actually pretty tedious and inconvenient. So what we did is we um, built some features uh, inside the Hadoop and also uh, we add some like features inside Hadoop. So we can replace the, the checking URL inside the application master to have a different URL than the previous one set up. And we also integrate this feature inside, inside Tony. So right now, if you want to access the TensorPort inside the Hadoop, Hadoop inside Tony application, 
you just need to tap on the, the checking URL, then it will be pointing to the uh, corresponding tensor board page for the for the for the application. And the next one is the for the tolerance. So as you know, the more workers you have, the more likely you will have some failures for your application, especially when you are launching like a large scale training jobs. And, and, and the good news is uh, for TensorFlow, it, it already supports checkpointing for the for training jobs, which means it will periodically like save the model checkpoint to HDFS and you could recover from that. So Tony took a, takes advantage of this feature so uh, every time if there's a like worker attempt failed, for example, if you have a, a job which has like 50 machines, 50 workers, and if one of them failed, we're gonna tell them the failed workers and restart the application and resume from the previous checkpoints. So it will automatically re recover from the failure and uh, continue the, uh, the training process. So after talking about uh, all the features, let me just give you uh, a demo. Um, so, um, Uh, so this is like our template inside uh, uh, our like Tensorflow starter kit. So it's basically providing our new uh, new our new Tensorflow users like a, a template so they can follow. So in the example, you can see uh, for us we have something called the uh, Guido plugin for our uh, Hadoop. So basically, you can just specify uh, what uh, the workflow would like. Like for example, what are the job dependencies? What are the what are the workflows? What are the jobs? So for Tony jobs, you just specify something called a Tony job, and then specify what's the name of the of, of the of the of the of the training job, and for example, what's the Python virtual environment, and what are the Python what's the Python binary path, and what you want to execute, and what are the task parameters. Then you can also specify how many instances you want or like how many workers you want, how many GPUs you want, then you can uh, easily run a Gradle command to upload this uh, zip to the ask to ask about. Oh, hi, uh, Kuchu, are you showing a different monitor? Because we're unable to see the demo. Oh, already? Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. This one, okay. Can you see this page now? Yes, now we can see it. Okay, okay. Uh, so this is basically uh, like, our uh, telephone start kit is like our start kit for the new users. Uh, this is the the Grido file. It is also open sourced. It's called the LinkedIn Grido, LinkedIn uh, Hadoop Grido uh, framework. So you can specify like the the, the parameters like this one, Tony job, as as I mentioned before, as I mentioned a couple of minutes ago. <coughs> specify the parameter, the properties, and parameter parameter how many parameter servers, how many workers, what are the uh, spec. You can also specify, for example, Tony the worker GPU, like one or two, and uh, after this one's done, you can just uh, use the Grido, Grido command called Grido like ask about upload. So we have a plugin for Grido ask Grido upload. After this one's done, uh, you will be able to see your uh, project inside the uh, ask I mean, go back to the previous screen. Okay. So yeah, so after you run the command, or you can also like manually upload the project inside Ask. Uh, I mean, so for example, uh, the demo I showed you is still 2002. So the one way is to like uh, run this one in Ask in the, in the terminal. The other one you can also upload the zip file like via this upload UI. You can choose the project and upload it. Um, after you upload the workflow, you can see like the uh, the, the deck. Basically, like what are the flows? What are the jobs included in, inside this workflow? Like for example, inside this project, we, inside this workflow, you have like three different tasks. The first one is the cache libraries. It's more like uploading libraries to get it ready. And also the second one is the main one, which is the actual Tony job to run the work. So if you look at the, 
uh, if you open the job, you can see what are the configurations. It's basically, it's basically the same as the one I showed you before in the previous uh, Sublime Terminal. So this will have, for example, like well, what's the spec, what are the, what's the execution function of execution command, task parameters, and some other like environment setups. So after you have done this, you just need to like run the run the flow, and just run and just, you can just run it. And because uh, I have already started one uh, before this talk, because uh, so this is like one example for one of, one one of the executions. So here are the logs. So we're gonna print out quite a lot of like information, and uh, by the end of the after the job has started, we're gonna we also gonna like print out what's the uh, where where are the workers? What's where where's the the log location of all the workers, the servers or whatever? So and also provide some update. So I, if you can see like at the bottom of this one, and also we are also provide links to the. Uh, the URL to check the running application. So this is will be the TensorFlow page. So you can just tap on this one, and you can see there's a, a TensorFlow. Yeah, so it's pretty easy to uh, to like check the TensorFlow when you are training with Tony. And you can see the graph is basically just pointing to the HDFS location for your original checkpoints. Then you can also examine what's going on with the, with, with, with the tensor board. Yeah, the scalars are what you defined. Like for example, uh, for example, accuracy, or for example, cross entropy loss, like throughout times. And uh, yeah, the other ones are the, are, the, are the logs. So if you can, for example, I wanna check the log for like worker zero, you can just go to the link, tap on the link, and uh, go to the corresponding container logs page and check the, what's the error. Yeah, so this is the, some training examples. And some standard out as well. So this is the standard out, standard out is more about uh, the, the logs for, from Tony. And the error right now is more about the logs from the training process. Okay. And the last demo. Uh, so yeah, Tony is open. Open sourced. We open sourced Tony uh, around September last year, and it's open sourced at GitHub.com, LinkedIn slash Tony, and of and uh, any pull requests are uh, welcome, either documentation or fix some bugs or some other stuff as well. And also we have an engineering post at LinkedIn at engineering.linkedin.com. It's about uh, the topic is uh, open source in Tony native support of TensorFlow on Hadoop. And the, for the next steps, um, right now we are building something called a Tony portal. So that's for used for submitting jobs and also for viewing the jobs executions. So the so it, uh, the first thing is more like like inside a notebook or inside a Python uh, process. You can like just call like Tony portal dot submit. Then it will automatically submit the job inside the cluster and uh, bring and uh, you can uh, check the, the the job process inside notebook. You don't have to go to another place. And uh, you are also you, should, you will also be able to view the past job executions from the Tony portal. So this will uh, will take advantage of ML flow. So we're gonna use integrate ML flow into our Tony portal as well to make it a component. And also we're gonna collect metrics for the training and integrate it with Dr. Elephant. If you uh, maybe. Uh, if you uh, use the loop tuning, you should you might know the Dr. Elephant. So the Elephant is our like tool. It's our tuning, um, our tuning framework. So they will automatically tune your job uh, to make it uh, more to be more e e efficient. So right now it does support both MapReduce and the Spark. Uh, it is also open sourced, but it's not. It does not support TensorFlow yet or like Tony yet. So we are trying to integrate this one. We are also trying to integrate the Tony metrics into Dart Elephant to provide Tony support for Tony jobs. And also uh, we are trying to like have some integration with the upstream, some the Hadoop submarine project. Uh, so we are we're trying to provide like a Tony runtime and how can we to better integrate with the Hadoop submarine ecosystem to make it a, like a easy way to run machine learning workload inside Hadoop. Yeah, and that's it.